Roger Ebert once said, I believe empathy is the most essential quality of civilization. Well, hear, hear, Roger Ebert. He also told us when watching movies, our emotions will never lie to us. There was genuine emotion today upon word that Roger Ebert had died. Just last night, right here, we were talking about him taking time off of film reviewing because of a recurrence of the cancer that he fought so bravely and so publicly for so long. Tonight from Chicago, NBC's John Yang has a look back. John Siskel and Ebert. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. He was a movie was critic as famous as the movie stars he reviewed, a sought-out voice on award show red carpets. I think it's going to win, and I think it is the best movie of the year. Roger Ebert has a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame and was the first film critic to win a Pulitzer. Thumbs up from me. But it's his thumb that made him a household name, the trademark review system developed with longtime co-host Gene Siskel. <laughs> They worked for rival newspapers, Siskel for the Chicago Tribune, Ebert for the Chicago Sun-Times, so their on-air sparks came naturally. Do you believe that a movie needs to be fair in order to be good? Does it need to be accurate in order to be good? Their relationship was the source of endless fascination. The question was, uh, do you like or hate each other? And I said, both. And Roger said... Neither. <laughs> when Siskel died of a brain tumor in 1999, Ebert called him the brother he never had. For 24 years, we were on television together. For more than 30 years, we fought it out on our newspaper jobs. There was um, a lot of competition, a lot of rivalry, but also respect and friendship. For Ebert, movies weren't just his career, they were his passion. And Asian American characters have the right to be whoever the hell they want to be. In 1985, he told Jane Pauley on Today his tastes were not highbrow. I, I like a Western if it's bad enough. I like it if it's good enough. I don't like the in-between movies. He wrote the screenplay for the 1970 movie Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Initially dismissed as schlock, it since gained cult status. This is my happening and it freaks me out. A prolonged battle with cancer drastically changed his appearance and robbed him of the ability to talk. He relied on a computer to be his voice. I was always extroverted. Now I am forced to live more within my mind. But the words never stopped, largely through social media. It breaks through the silence I have been condemned to. It gives me a voice. Not this computer speaking voice, so much as a voice in print. A voice he used to spread his love of film to fans everywhere. John Yang, NBC News, Chicago. Roger Ebert gone tonight at the age of 70. 